Hey, this is Anthony with Revzilla. You can watch Decide and Ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Cena Momentum and Momentum Lite Bluetooth integrated helmet available at Revzilla.com. This is the Cena Momentum. I believe Cena's first foray into the helmet realm. Now, for those of you that are new to Cena products or the Bluetooth game, there are two things going on here, but I'm gonna set it up with who is Cena. Cena is a Korean manufacturer that is one of the leaders, if not the leader, in Bluetooth technology for motorcycling. So that allows you to talk rider to rider, use your music, tie with your GPS via Bluetooth, ultimately use an FM radio, share music with your passenger. It's a full suite of controls for both utility and entertainment, and typically Cena, through their entire range, has made units that would either stick or clamp to the helmet that you're already wearing. What Cena has done here with the first time with this Momentum and Momentum Lite is now they're developing a family of integrated helmets. So what you're getting here is ultimately a fiberglass composite DOT rated helmet that ultimately, in my opinion, comes in with a function and value for dollar rating. I'll call it around the $250 to $300 mark for this helmet. What you're also getting is a full Bluetooth integration where there is nothing that hangs, dangles, creates noise, it has to be installed on this helmet. You are getting essentially with the Momentum Lite, a 10 series Cena unit, and with the Momentum, you're getting a 20S series Cena unit. And the only difference between those units in functionality is one is allowing you to do eight riders, paired, the other is four riders paired. The 10 is going to have four, the 20S is going to allow up to eight. They're app configurable, again, music, GPS, Bluetooth, FM radio, noise canceling, voice activation, the microphone, the battery, all of the wiring, the speakers, everything's integrated. And the beauty here, because we're gonna break down the unit and we're also gonna break down the helmet itself, is you have all your controls that don't hang off the side, they're just simply integrated. So you can see along the back here, there's my on, off, up, down, forward, back, allowing me to control the device. And on this side, that's where I'm gonna plug in to charge it. So again, remember, you have the Bluetooth unit integrated. The other benefit here, and when I think about, before I get to the other benefit, which is ultimately the talk time, because they made the battery bigger, right? So I'll just tell you that going into it. But let's rewind a second. When we think about a $200 to $300 helmet for fiberglass DOT with this type of feature and functionality, coupled with either a 10 series or a 20 series unit, which are anywhere from the $200 to the $300 range, you're looking at anywhere between four to $600 of investment if you went and bought a different manufacturer's helmet and put a Cena 10 or 20 series Bluetooth communicator on the helmet. What you're getting here is the 20 or the 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 momentum light is going to be around $400 and for an extra $50 you're getting the momentum which gives you that 20 the 20 S up to eight riders configuration. So really, you do have a cost saving factor anywhere from one to 200 bucks when you're doing that math. There's an efficiency by putting them both together. And I gave it away earlier. There's the ability to add a larger battery, which gives you to 20 to 27 hours of talk time, which a standard singular clamp on or sticky mounted unit that you'd buy separately would really only give you eight to 10 hours of talk time. You're essentially doubling the talk time. Now, you might look at it and say, well, what's the drawback? I bet it got crazy heavy. Three pounds, 11 ounces for these bad boys. I immediately looked at it and I said, there's no way that thing's not a brick. Three pounds, 11 ounces for both units together where a typical unit caught is anywhere from two to four ounces, that's rock solid. You're also getting the benefit of it being fully waterproof because everything is encapsulated. Typically, if you're using a standalone Cena unit, adding it to another helmet, the best you get is water resistant. Now, Cardo does waterproof units. We know that. We've been yelling at Cena over time. And instead of making a waterproof standalone unit, they just gave you a waterproof helmet unit. I will tell you, that outside some other nuanced things that I'm gonna walk through with this helmet, the biggest drawback that we see to this helmet is if you're thinking in terms of component versus integration. If you bought another helmet and you put a 10 series or 20 series from Cena, you always have the ability to buy that helmet whatever you want, whether it's the graphic, whether it's the fit, the fine tune, get a lighter helmet, and then you can either upgrade, configure, install something different, and if something goes wrong, you can always swap it out. Just like when you buy a TV that has its own speakers and Wi-Fi built in, it's giving you, when you start to get an integrated system, you can more seamlessly put things together. But over time, there are things that could go wrong that ultimately, if you said, hey, I have a warranty issue with this, it needs to get repaired, you're basically going to be out of a helmet because there's no way to remove the Bluetooth communication and the electronics and get that service separately. Ultimately, known quantity, just go in eyes wide open. But as a base frame of reference between bigger battery, waterproof, saving money, full integration, it's a better aerodynamic profile because you have nothing hanging off the helmet 
helmets, and the buttons work really well. All in, unless you're in that range of saying, I need a four to $700 helmet because I wanna play at the more premium end. If you're okay with a helmet that ultimately is helmet for a dollar in that two to $300 range, as it makes up the base units here, this could work really well for you. Now, let's talk briefly about fit, and then we're gonna walk through all the components. I'll show you the guts, I'll break it fully down. Fit-wise, it's intermediate oval. My head's in intermediate oval shape. A little bit longer front to back. Should fit most of the American market unless you're really, really round and earth-like or you're super narrow. But typically, if you know those outlier fits, you're ultimately going to immediately understand that you're already one of those fit schemes. The other thing you need to keep in mind is the port on this where your head entry enters and exits. This is almost a snug to race fit. You can see how the neck roll is laid out in the cheek pads. Just the way they designed it. It's very snug around the cheek pads. You don't have the ability to change the sizing of the cheek pads. There are components here like microphones and speakers that are already built in, but it does get snug in there, even with that intermediate oval head shape. And you can see the opening at the bottom. I like that it's more snug. I like that it's more encompassing, almost like an Icon Armada, which again, giving you that snug fit cuts down on ambient outside or wind noise, but keep that in mind. If you want to feel less claustrophobic, maybe go buy a modular helmet and do something different. This guy is going to feel all-encompassing fit and make you feel nice, warm, and cozy, and safe. But you need to know that going in. Use the size chart. We'll ship free over 39 bucks. And as always, I'd love you to click our logo, subscribe to us at RevZilla on our YouTube channel, leave me your comments, request your feedback on the new Momentum and Momentum Light. Now, before I go through some of the other nuances, there are a few other pieces of the Momentum family here. We're gonna see a Momentum Inc. that's gonna go up in price again next year and hopefully the tail end of 18. And what's gonna happen over here on this side, outside of the connectivity for your charging port, what you're also gonna get is the ability to tune, turn on, turn off, or tune the Momentum Inc, which, and I think I said Momentum Pro, but it's gonna be the Momentum Inc, which is integrated noise canceling, just like Bose headphones that ultimately put out a signal that cuts down on ambient noise. That's gonna be an upgrade over the regular Momentum. We're also gonna see the Momentum Pro, which I believe I mentioned, I might've spoken out of turn. That's gonna have a fully integrated 360 degree camera that will work on top of the helmet. Again, so you're gonna have flavors of additional functionality integration within this Momentum family. Now. Really quickly, remember, I set it up front. The only difference between a Momentum and a Momentum Lite is eight riders paired for, for intercom and four riders paired. They're still Bluetooth 4.1, firmware upgradable. You're going to be able to use the app to configure these units. The speakers are the same. Ultimately, it's noise canceling. You have the ability to move forward and back with your music, make phone calls, share your music rider to rider. Ultimately, when we think about these, they are going to be the same unit. It's just a matter of, do you want to be able to pair four people or eight people? That's the distinction. If you want to go further into the weeds and the functionality, watch a Cena 20S video. Ultimately, you get a great gauge on the base level of functionality here. But remember, the big thing is the increased battery life, which ultimately, you're going to charge this like once a month. It's insane that you're getting up to 20 to 27 hours of actual talk time and usage, because whenever you're using the intercom or using your phone, that's going to be the biggest drain on this bad boy. Now, the helmet itself, because at this point you should be up to speed on Bluetooth functionality. The venting is fine. It was rock solid. The shell is fiberglass. It's how you hit three pounds and 11 ounces. It is, it is DOT. It's not carrying an ECE or a Snell rating. I would have loved to see them do that extra work to get the ECE rate rating, but there's a lot going on here. We look at it, you're getting an integrated chin spoiler that you can remove. It does come pin lock ready. The biggest gripe we had with this lid is that yeah, this is a bit of a flimsy shield. And it's not the shield that's flimsy, it's really the detents and the usage. I wish it felt a little bit more positive. And actually, actually, there we go. Hold on one second here. That guy was out. There we go. It was popped out on that side, but it's still a little bit flimsy. There's no detents to allow me to crack it for the city position. The shield change mechanism is going to be quick, and remember, you can add the pin lock to get that anti-fog factor after the, after the fact. Working our way around to the back, pass a Venturi vent out through the back, which is going to allow air to come out of the back, be suctioned out of the back. Again, remember, the sphere creates the vacuum, and it's going to pull warm, moist air out of the helmet. Now, I will tell you, when I show you the bottom of the helmet and the interior guts, the channels leave a little bit of something to be desired. They're not the deepest channels for the best air circulation that I've seen. But again, know that going in. We look at the rest of it, no passive vents along the side. You have your controls on both sides of the lid. If I pop it up like this, we showed you once. Neck rolls, fully removable. You'd have a pop of reflectivity along the side. You do have leather here, so it's going to have a better chance of not sliding off your bike if you put it down. But it's not the most surprising, not the most surprising thing. It's, I don't think it's meant to be surprising at all. You're ultimately looking at it and saying it should just be rock solid for what it is, which is a helmet that feels commensurate in the two to $300 range that will do the basics really well, will vent well, will ultimately give me a better field of view 
and then give me some cost savings by integrating that Cena device ahead of time. Now what I did was I pre-extracted some of the internal guts. Let's start with the comfort liner. If I move my comfort liner over, notice it's a brow connected, which means that there's gonna be no pressure points in the front of the helmet, and then ultimately it goes up under the neck roll there with that scoop in the back. 3D, a mixture of mesh, a mixture of wicking material, antimicrobial. We've seen this become really par for the course in any helmet over $100 these days, and Cena does not disappoint throwing it, not because I don't like it, but because I need more room on my table. This is your neck roll. This is a piece that leaves me desiring a little bit more. I always find that when it's a pin system that removes with the cheek pads, it's just a little harder to get in and out. And you're gonna wanna get it in and out if you're gonna wanna clean it or defunkify it. That's really up to you, but the nice part is they didn't integrate the speakers into the neck roll, they're actually into the shell. So you can run this underwater, clean it, allow it to air out, make sure it's pristine and not funky on you. Notice, different materials here, Micro suede, mesh for wicking and breathability. You have mesh along the backside for comfort here. And we talked earlier about that reflective pop. But it is one of the harder mechanisms to remove, being that it is going to use that ring that goes around. Schubert was the first person that did that. And I've never been a fan of that. Now, if I take the lid, this one's fully encompassed. I'm going to pull my donut over here, pop this guy that I pulled all the guts out, and show you there's our bigger battery. Here's our pre-integrated speakers. They're massive. There's plenty of room, plenty of room for your ears. They're not going to be a pressure point. And if you look at the top of the helmet here, notice I did call it out earlier. I'd like to see better ventilation channels in this lid. But remember, the antenna goes all the way through this helmet. You get a mile of range out of it. It does the basics of Bluetooth well, plus some of the icing on the cake type features that we're seeing these days. It really has all of the key features you'd expect from a Bluetooth unit, except for a mesh network, which is what the next technology that we're seeing come out is. And the helmet, isn't frills, but I'm not expecting frills. I'm expecting the basics of great functionality, performance without being too heavy, that will vent well, be aerodynamic, and this profile is pretty universal. Upright, three-quarter tuck, it's really up to you. So whether you're sport touring, sport commuting, sport riding, or you're just like that classic touring rider that wants you and your passenger to have similar helmets that match, that have a full suite of integration, you can go that way. The next step in your journey is to click the info button, your desktop or mobile device. Visit the product detail page at revzilla.com, read other rider reviews. You shouldn't just take my word for it. As always, we'll ship free over 39 bucks. If you want to talk to a gear geek, see us at revzilla.com or 877 Four, five, five. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown. Remember, subscribe to us at Revzilla on our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with our opinion on the latest and greatest in the Moto Universe. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.